Time travel, one of mankind's favorite fantasies. But what if it were possible to build a real time machine and travel to the future or the past? The invention of a real time machine would probably be the most important thing in the history of the world, in the history of man. Scientists are now teetering on the edge of making the impossible a reality. This century, I feel, will be seen as the century of time travel, just as the 20th century was seen as the century of space travel. Here in this laboratory, the first real attempts to travel through time will soon begin. The future and the past may never be the same again. Imagine a time, say about a hundred years from now, when time travel is no longer science fiction. Instead, it's taught to our great, great, great grandchildren as science fact. Okay, listen guys, we've got a lot to get through today, okay? So keep close together, no wandering off. Now come with me. Here stands a monument to mankind's greatest single scientific achievement. A museum of time travel. Such a museum would be a popular attraction, an edifice designed to tell a story that for us has yet to happen. Strange as it may seem, this future is not beyond the realms of possibility, for we are on the threshold of mastering time itself. So, here it is, the Museum of Time Travel. So this museum was built on the site of the very first successful time machine. And we're going to find out later why that makes it so very special. But for now, the first step on our journey is to have a look at the past. Imagine what it was like over a century ago, in an age where the future was uncertain and the past a bit of a mystery. The history of time travel begins with fantasy and fiction, the compelling dream of visiting another time. Imagine, for example, traveling back to April 1912 and averting the catastrophic loss of thousands of lives by warning the captain of the Titanic of the iceberg. Or how about visiting Germany in 1938 and assassinating Hitler, thus preventing World War II? Tinkering with history is easy to imagine, but in reality, even the basic concept of time is a tough one to grasp. Time is the weirdest thing. You cannot see it. You cannot touch it. You cannot smell it. And yet it rules our lives with absolute control. We are all carried along in the present. We're trapped in this moment that we call now. Or at least we were until the efforts of these great minds freed us from the tyranny of time. In 1905, Albert Einstein came up with a theory that allowed scientists to take over where the dreamers had left off. Most thought that time travel would never be possible for real. But way back in the early 21st century, one man has an idea. His name is Ronald L. Mallette. One day, Ron Mallette may be seen as a true pioneer. He believes he's very close to the ultimate prize, a real working time machine. It is the culmination of a lifelong quest that began with the death of his father. The reason I became interested in time travel was my father. Uh, he was really a terrific person and 
I loved him very deeply, and he died of a heart attack when he was only 33, and I was 10 years old, and I was devastated. It turned my world upside down. Science fiction became the young boy's salvation, for in it, he found the hope that he needed to overcome his grief. I thought, what if I could build a time machine and go back into the past, then I would be able to see him again and maybe save his life. So that became my goal, to build a time machine. As Ron grew up, he began to study science as well as science fiction, discovering a natural talent for the subject. Fast forward 40 years, and the young boy with the impossible dream is now a professor of physics at the University of Connecticut, an expert in the one branch of science that allows him to tinker with time. The journey has certainly been worthwhile, for the fruits of his labors are tantalizingly close. I feel that with current technology, it's possible at the very least to send subatomic particles back into the past. The professor's confidence is well-founded. This is a recently published paper in which the principle is outlined. It's been received enthusiastically. We've known for a long time that time travel is possible in theory. What we've never known is how to do it. But what Mallet has come up with here is a means to achieve it. He's got a blueprint for a time machine. Physicist and writer Dr. Michael Brooks is well aware that sending particles back in time would also allow information to take the same route. And then things would get really strange. This paper could revolutionize the world we know, shattering forever the barriers between the past, the present, and the future. Although the professor's idea is new, the underlying science is very well established. In fact, the first steps towards it were taken a long time ago. Now, this next exhibit features Simon Wells, who's the great-grandson of the man many call the original father of time travel. Hi, my name is Simon Wells. My great-grandfather was H.G. Wells. In 1895, he wrote a very famous book called The Time Machine. And early in the 21st century, I made a movie out of that book. Do you want to take a look? The Time Machine was not only a good book, it also set the precedent in which fiction inspires reality. It's the story of a Victorian scientist who tries to go back to prevent the murder of his fiancée. The sad bit is that he discovers he can do nothing to change the past. And eventually, he travels into the far future to witness what becomes of the human race. When it was published, the time machine immediately seized the public imagination. But the amazing thing is, it was also responsible for the first breakthrough in the real science of time travel. The breakthrough was to treat time as a fourth dimension. A dimension in which it may be possible to travel, just like traveling across a city. Imagine Professor Millet gets an invitation to a meeting in New York City. Thanks. To make sure he gets to the meeting, the invitation must have a number of pieces of information on it. First, he needs a street number. Since New York is laid out on a grid, that number will give him a position in the north-south direction. Next, he needs the avenue, in this case, Fifth Avenue, which gives him a position in the east-west direction. So far, he has found the unique location of the meeting in two directions, or dimensions. Now he needs another piece of information to tell him where the meeting is in the third dimension. 